Somebody has a new record out. Can I can I call it a solo record or? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the band's name is Justice Cow, and a new record is called Underglam. Tell me about where the album title came from. It's an interesting use of words. Um, it was something that Ben said. <laughs> More Ben. <laughs> um, and I just was like. That's so good. And that was like, I think even before I wrote anything, that was probably like 2016. We were just, I don't even know, like in the van maybe. And um, like, t I think it just came up and it came up like as an album title. Maybe it was brainstorming for some other album or something. I don't even know. But I, I heard that and I was just like, Mine. <laughs> I'm going to have that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a fantastic record, by the way. You know, I, I don't get you. to hear enough of your voice at Bent Knee Gigs. Don't tell Courtney I said that. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to hear you step out, you know, on, on your own. Uh, tell me about your methodology. How did you come about putting the songs together? Um, well, I wrote the songs over like a really long period of time and um, I then kind of got stuck and I was really having like a hard time writing. Um, I experienced a bit of writer's block, if you will. <laughs> right. Um, and so I was trying a bunch of weird stuff to try to just move forward like um particularly i remember i was babysitting courtney and vince's also some of my bentney bandmates um their cat in providence and the idea was i could go down to providence and use their empty house as like songwriting time and then um and just kind of like focus because I for the album I wrote uh, Fam Fiction the previous album uh, I was awarded a grant and I like was set up in this huge house in, on Martha's Vineyard it was beautiful I, I was all by myself and they would bring me food oh, wow. um, and <laughs> So I just, like, my whole job for two weeks was just to write songs. And I would, like, bike places and just, like, be around people a little bit. <laughs> because right. I consider myself, like, a bit more of an extrovert. So um, I was like, okay, I can't, like, completely be alone this whole time. I think I need just, like, something. And um, then I would, you know, ride home and write, like, just all day um very little breaks and I wouldn't like uh you know watch anything I had like strict rules and I was like really sticking to them and fun story about that also was um like two days before the end of it my computer was like filled up because I was writing so much and uh, I was erasing stuff and I erased the oh, whole no. album. Oh, no. Um, so for please, the last... please tell me you had a backup somewhere. Oh no, no, I didn't. <laughs> um, but I did have like recording parts of every song before they were like officially on my computer, like as I was learning them and working them out. So through like the little pieces that I had, I re recorded the whole thing like in a day and a half and then wow. was like okay hey so, I, so you I, had, i'm where i was two days right? ago so, so you had <laughs> demos of demos and you just kind of you kind of exactly. went from there and i'm just my heart just seized up hearing <laughs> hearing something mm -hmm. like that no pressure are you one of those people that works better under under pressure or um the thing is i definitely work better with people depending on like a deadline or something right. and I find that when I'm doing things for myself I end up 
just it just becomes this gray mush and just like push further and further into the future unless I like tell the internet or you know like <laughs> um, it's so tricky to like make real deadlines for myself but that have a band for this record and of course you're in Bent Knee which strikes me as a bit more of a, a democracy in terms of contributions. Mm-hmm. Were you using the same approach with Justice Cow or are you more of a uh, how much latitude do you give the band is what, what I'm ultimately asking? Um, Much less. Um, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I think for most of these songs I had like pretty specific ideas but then also you know experience has taught me that these people that I have chosen to work with aren't um, they do better when they can explore and so it'll be like okay record it the way I envision and then like do whatever you want and we'll probably end up using both you know. <laughs> Fair enough. The very very Frank Zappa esque. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's here's your part. Play play this. So I, yeah. I, I, who would you uh who would you say influenced this? I know what I was hearing, but you know, ah. I, I I heard kind of a, a Kate Bush vibe cool. to, to the whole thing. So but that was me and I'm not you. So what what was influencing you? Um I would say Okay, so I would say St. Vincent is, like, always, always in the mix. Um, Particularly a couple songs very influenced by Janelle Monae and Grimes. And then I discovered Big Thief while I was listening to, while I was making this album. And that was probably the biggest one. Um, Even though it doesn't sound like Big Thief, um, like, at all. The, just the um, the the lyric writing in their songs is f- f- my favorite of oh, all yeah. music. So um, definitely gave me a lot of a lot to think about. Uh, right now. That. Well, sometimes it's not so much about sounding like a group; it's just the mindset you go into yeah. that kind of mental space, and that's what what guides you along. You have just enough in, or in, experimentation on this album to keep everybody just a little bit off balance <laughs> you know start you know starting with the big fuzzy bass at the very beginning mm-hmm. do you make a conscious choice on how much you want to experiment or does that just happen um uh, i think like half and half i think like like the um the ending of the last song future just getting cut off right when it's like about to get like so fun or like <laughs> right right after it starts getting so fun um that like was always the plan but things like and i mean depending on how you listen like you might not have even noticed it but like um i think it was molasses ben and i were it was like totally mixed and uh I was like I'm feeling like the energy is like a little low and I'm feeling like if we speed this up just like a little bit um it'll bring some of that back and so uh we did and it was awesome and then at the end you hear kind of like the the, like it has like the sped up version for like all of the song and then there's like a moment where I think it gets faster at the very end and then it gets to the original tempo as like the last thing you hear. And so we just kind of were like just moving around like the slider <laughs> of the speed and I was just like, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> at least you have that mindset. That's always a, 
That's always a good thing. You are a bass player, and mm -hmm. I have to wonder about your approach. Are you thinking about your solo records as a bass player, or are you thinking more as a songwriter, or is it a combination thereof? I think, I think I'm like, I think number one, it's like vocals and songwriting, and then like truly like bass just as a part of everything else. I'm, I'm not even like being like, let's make some sick bass lines. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> let's get, let's get the bass part to be right. And then the drum part to be right. And you know, just right. like, yeah. So you're, uh, the bass is serving the song right, rather than the other way around. <laughs> yeah. That basically makes sense. Um, where do you want to go with this record? What's the what's the master plan? I mean, I think it's just it's just out. Um, <laughs> I I think I'm going to finish some of the. I may I've been working on like three different music videos that are in that stage of like deadlines are hard for yourself right. and especially animated stuff is taking a long time but um yeah like i i have really neat um some different styles that i'm experimenting with and um just there's there's a cool program called eb synth have you heard mm -hmm. of this i i have not it's um it uses ai to predict how um like if let's say if i were to like make a still frame of this video and like draw over like the you know like where my shirt is and where my hair is and where my eyes are and stylize them by like drawing them or even if i put them in like some kind of filter um i take one frame and then i say apply that to the video and it can like depending on how long it is and how much you're moving it can really like stylize you know hundreds of frames right but also um if it goes too long it'll be like you blink and then your eyes open and they're just like black holes <laughs> <laughs> or your mouth opens and you have no teeth. <laughs> so. That's not that's not creepy at all. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like glitches out in like the creepiest way. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Uh, I just saw a uh, a uh, comedy special with Tig Notaro called oh, uh, Drawn. Called uh, Drawn, where instead of her standing there with the mic, she actually they actually did animated versions of her of her bits. As she, went along, as she went along, it's it's really good. I I, I was shocked by how good it was, and I I help, can't help but wonder if more musicians wouldn't like to to head in that particular direction. Yeah, I mean, even um, I feel like three D like learning Blender could be like everyone's key to making stuff for themselves because it's like. If you're in the music world, you have, you know, friends playing on your stuff for free or like definitely like not what they're really worth, you know, because right. it's just a community. That's what everyone does. And you build something and you're like, I spent four months making this EP or something. And you're like, and, you know, I use all my friends and all my resources. And then you're like, okay, I want a, one music video for one song of this EP. And you go to someone and they're like, it's going to cost the same amount with the same amount of time for one person <laughs> to do one song. Right. And, and it's just like, I, I've been on both sides of that. And it's like really hard to just be like, it's hard to poo poo the whole art form and it's hard to really like kind of, it feels like you're giving it more weight than the music itself. Like you're putting more effort in um, the making of the music video than the music when 
the music video is probably not even going to be seen as much as the song is going to be heard. Right. And it's it's a wild thing. And it's like, it's tedious work. Like, it's much more tedious work to make a music video, like 2D animation or even 3D animation than it is to, like, make a song, I think. Um, so... Maybe <laughs> me. What, uh, what ultimately do you want your, your listeners to get out of this album? Um, I think, I mean, the, the hope, I think, always is, like, um, like, I've heard of movies being described as, like, empathy machines. You okay. know, you watch a movie and you might have, like, a completely different opinion about something than when you walked in. And... I think it's harder to do that with songs um, and it also might take a lot longer because you listen to a song you know however many times before you even kind of like understand what it's about right. unless you're the kind of person who like looks up the lyrics and like like me and is just like what is this song <laughs> da, 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 da. like ooh, that's a cool metaphor <laughs> um, but like I think the idea is like people just like have more stories in their in their minds and um like one th I I recently taught a new student songwriting and they were saying that the the energy of the song show you was like so counterintuitive to how they were approaching writing and just how they are um and it it like i don't necessarily think i'm a super show you kind of person right. um but i love that idea of like people taking some like sassiness in like some sassiness pills like okay <laughs> i can i can like turn it up a little bit if i need to Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. You're you're still pretty young. What what else is out there that you want to do that you haven't accomplished musically? Oh, um, well, I've been practicing. Um, I've been so. I recently got really into Brandy Carlisle, mm -hmm. and her voice is just. It it's full of, like different kinds of vocal techniques that like I've never seen uh, in general much less together mm -hmm. um, and so one thing that I I've like just spent a lot of time <laughs> working on is like um, like some types of like vocal distortion and um, like like I don't even know what it's called, but it's almost like a yodel where you like you have like a low note and then it kind of flips into a higher note. Um, okay. And so I, I'm very much like in in that camp where I'm like like listening to her a couple of her songs like hundreds of times and trying to like <laughs> get every syllable and tone under my belt. Um, but uh, I think musically, like, I I have a, a couple other, like, more embarrassing things that I'm working on that, like, are just, uh, I think it's just because it's so hard. I'm like, I think I have to do this where um, I recently got a looper and I've been, like, learning some, like, beatbox techniques and trying to freestyle over it. And it's like, it's crazy. Like as soon as I switch into adding notes and like singing the lines rather than just speaking them, like the rhymes get better. It all gets easier. I'm like 
great at it. But as right. soon as you take that stuff away, I just get stuck. And it's such a like a hard thing to try. So I think that's something that I'm I'm working on is just like how do you basically I I see freestyling as a way to like increase the like ability you know the the strength of like like writing from like the like subconscious like that speed and the way that rhymes can happen and like how to link words and how to make things make sense like as they come out and um I think that will just make me a better writer so <laughs> I'm I've been working on that and it is uh Ben and I were doing it yesterday, and um, Ben's got a lot more experience, and we're he he can go for much longer. We just like have a metronome on, and, right. and he's he's going, and then it gets to me, and for some reason I keep getting stuck and saying we go to the house, <laughs> like it just keeps coming up every 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 verse. Um, it was making me like cry laugh because I couldn't stop saying and then we go to the house <laughs> there's something going on in that house that you need to uh <laughs> you, need to, you, need to, you need to get to the root of that whatever it is <laughs> yeah. For my rabbit fans out there, and I know a couple of them are paying attention, let's uh, let's talk about Ben Nee for a, for a second. I'll okay. Just, I'll keep it simple. What uh, what's going on in the Ben Nee world? All right. So we are. I literally don't know what I'm allowed to say and not allowed to say. Um, so I'm just gonna like be a little vague, and then I can okay. tell you everything once we get off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no Ben Nee spoilers here, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah we're so we're going on tour um and that's really exciting we're opening for this band that has a very long name and our manager refers to them as the world is but they go by the world right. is a beautiful place and i'm no longer afraid to die I believe, and wow. um, <laughs> how yeah, post -rock. how post rock, <laughs> yeah, and it's really, really exciting because I think for the last several tours, um, I hadn't like really listened to the band we were about to go on tour with, just oh. because I was like. I'm, I'm going to be surprised and it's going to be an interesting experience and I'll get to know them and that is a really cool way to do it but for this band I was like I'm going to check them out and um, it was pretty cool to be like oh dang I really like them and I'm really excited to see these songs live and that's just like I've never really had that experience before where I'm like oh like yeah I think this is going to be like just a different a different vibe and um like uh it, it's really neat they're like a lot of them are vegans and so the whole like um like roster of like food and stuff is like all vegan and it's very funny in Bentney we were very split it in the reaction to that <laughs> as you can imagine um, I think I'm already in my head picturing who's on which side yeah. <laughs> I think you're exactly right <laughs> and, and that's all I'm going to say about that <laughs> yeah. How, uh, are you guys have you guys been able to keep in touch pretty regularly uh, you know with the whole with the bug running around yeah um you mean with with like with with, co with covid protocols and all that good stuff yeah yeah we we've gotten together a little bit and um we it was like the best it had been like since i can remember like just such 
good vibes and it so like wholesome and so <laughs> it just it really it really feels like we're on like a new chapter and we're like it, yeah it, it's like there's a lot of darkness around the covid right. stuff and there's a lot of uncertainty about the future and um i think it changes like how you appreciate your your buds you know i uh I hate to be cliche, but it sounds like uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder along those mm, lines. It <laughs> might exactly be that. <laughs> yeah. so where, where are my bandmates? I, I miss them so. I, I understand. <laughs> so we're going on the road. I'm trying desperately not to ask a question that would lead to a spoiler. <laughs> but uh, Well, you can ask it, and I could, I could answer in a way that... Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, let's, we'll start with the obvious. Is there another another possible record looming out there someplace oh i would say uh the skies are looking good okay <laughs> good good <laughs> that's a good start and you guys are you guys have been stretching out so uh well this is really hard <laughs> are you are you stretching out more is it similar is it in a similar vein or how, how is it feeling well okay so in the past We've written all together, and this made that impossible. Ah. So we, I think, I think uh, it's, I mean, the thing is, like, we, I think we always say, like, this is our craziest album yet, and then it's, like, <laughs> this much crazier, you know? And <laughs> right. But I think the differences that are upcoming will... Um, I think they they feel bigger to me. I'm a little up sometimes. Ah! I'm a shit. 